OK. So ladies and gentlemen, what I want to do is we're going to use the rational 0 test to help us determine the, all the possible rational zeros. So remember what we've talked about so far in this course. We've talked about finding zeros. And the only way to find zeros was to factor it, right? Break it down to its factors. Then you could solve to find its factors. Or I would give you a factor or a 0, and then you would use division to find the rest of the factors and zeros, correct? OK. So now, this one's going to look pretty difficult to factor, right? Kind of, uh, uh. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some tests to help us determine all of the zeros. The first test was the rational zero test, which I you know, explain a little bit more further in detail here. What the rational zero test tells us is all the possible rational zeros, that means the rational solutions for our problem, the rational x-intercepts, can all be in the form of p divided by q, where p represents the factors of your constant, and q represents the factors of your leading coefficient. So let's take a look at it. What are all the factors of 6? You have plus and minus 6, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 1, right? What are all the factors of 2? Plus or minus 2, plus or minus 1. So here's what we do. Plus or minus 6, I'm going to show you the long way first, and then you can start abbreviating if you'd like to. So plus or minus 6 over 2, comma, plus or minus 6 over 1, comma, plus or minus 3 over 2, comma, plus or minus 3 over 1. <sighs> Again, I'm showing you the long way. Plus or minus 2 over 1. No, let's do 2, right? Keep it in order. Plus or minus 2 over 1, comma, plus or minus 1 over 2, comma, plus or minus 1 over 1. Is that all the possible combinations? Did I miss one? I did all the factors of 6, and then I did all the factors of 2, right? Now, do we have some repeats? Yeah, right? So we don't need to write in all the repeats. This, 6 divided by 2, is going to be plus or minus 3, right? This one's plus or minus 6, plus or minus 3 halves. Plus or minus 3, I don't need to do that again, do I? Here, that's going to be plus or minus 1. Um, plus or minus 2, we don't have. And we don't have plus or minus 1 half. Okay, So that's all. This is your solution set for all of your possible rational zeros. Possible. I don't know if any of these are your solutions or not. I just know these are your, if you're going to have a rational 0 as your 0, it's going to be one of these numbers. OK? Got it? All right. So <coughs> how do we know which one it is? So you have a possible 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 possible zeros. Guess what? If you don't have a graph calculator, what do you got to do? Guess and check each one of them. Now, it's not that bad. How do you determine if it's a 0 or not? You can use synthetic division. It's really not that bad. And usually, I would not pick 3 halves or 1 half to start off with synthetic division. I would use, my, I would use the easy numbers, too. First, do synthetic division with 1, negative 1. Then do synthetic division with 2, negative 2. It's not that bad, all right? However, when you have technology such as Google or when you have a graphing calculator, what you can do is you can graph this function. And what you notice, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, I can't remember exactly what the graph looks like, but I do know one, two, three, four, five. I do know it goes something like this. All right? So there's different ways to find the zeros, all right? And I can show you guys all to do those. I'm not going to do it for the video. That's a different thing. But one thing I did notice is I checked in, and it looks like negative 6 is a 0. And I can verify that, but just by looking at this graph, even if I don't know, even if I'm just looking at I know the shape of the graph, it looks like negative 6 is a graph. So the graph looks like this. Does that mean, can I, let's eliminate a couple zeros. Is positive 3 or negative 3 a 0? By looking, I don't know the exact zeros, but is positive 3 or negative 3 a 0? No, I know that for sure. It looks like negative 6 is a 0. I'll verify it later. But we, can we determine that positive 6 is not a 0? Yes. Positive 3 halves, that could be. That's like 1.5. It's pretty close. But negative 3 halves is not 1. So we're not going to have negative 3 halves. 
plus or minus 1. Negative 1 is definitely not 1, but 1 might be. Plus or minus 2? No, it's not close to plus or minus 2, so that one's not. And negative 1 half's not, but positive 1 half might be. All right. So now what we've done, just by looking at the graph, do you guys see? Now we eliminated it to 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros. Is that as bad to do, to verify now? No, now we at least. Now I'm not wasting my time doing synthetic division with plus or minus 3. right? So you guys see how technology, graphing calculator, is be very, 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 very beneficial to you? It's just a time um, helper. So what we're going to do to verify our solution is let's do synthetic division with negative 6. So I do 2, 7, negative 26, positive 23, negative 6. So let's test if negative 6 is a solution. Bring down the 2. 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. Negative five, when you add 7 plus negative 12 is negative 5. Negative 5 times negative 6 is a positive 30. Add them up, negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 6 is a positive? Yes, it is a positive 4. Jeez, oh man. Slow down, Mr. McLogan. 4 times negative 6 is going to be a negative 24. Negative 1, positive 6, 0. Right? Now, can we factor this? Well, that's a to a third power, right? So what I want to do is I'd want to check maybe one of my other solutions. Now, we can show um, where exactly a group is. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, I'll show you guys how to, uh, how to find these zeros in a second. But what I want to do is I actually want to determine what my other zero is. Because I can't remember. I think it is two. But I'm just going to verify with my calculator. I'll show you guys how to do it with your calculator um, next. Yeah, it looks like one. Let's try one. Why not? I'm pretty sure that was right. So I'm going to race this real quick. See you later, Stephanie. So now remember what we did last class or two class periods ago? Now I can use this result. And let's do synthetic division with one. So I'll do 2, negative 5, 4, negative 1. So bring down the 2. 2 times 1 is 2, negative 3. Negative 3 times 1 is uh, negative 3, 1. Uh, see there, 2, 2, 2 times 2 is 2, negative 3, positive 1. Yeah, it's 1. I'm right. 0. Pretty cool, right? Then I look over here, and I have 2 times neg or when I write it as my answer, 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. See if I can factor that. Can I factor the remainder of that? Anybody? Factor? So you're going to have 2x times that's going to be there. So you could about to buy what two numbers multiply by 1. So it has to be, um, let's see, that would be negative 1, 2x minus 1. No, that's not going to work. And it's not going to be factorable. So it's not going to be factorable. You could use, um, so what we could do is it's not going to be factorable. Um, so what we can do is, you know, do uh, if you wanted to find the rest of the zeros, you can. Um, we could f use quadratic formula and get the zeros in the complex realm, um, or we could also look at we could also look at our calculator and see if there's another zero that we could do synthetic division with, and use that out there. All right. So I'll just leave it at here. But one thing we notice is negative six and negative and positive one are two zeros. So we figured the rest of them out by using synthetic division. Then from here, I would just have to factor or use the quadratic formula to find the rest of the zeros. All right? But since class is almost over, I'll leave it at that. Um, actually, you know what it was? I think it's, let me try 1 half. So let's take this rest. We said 1 half was a 0, right? Did we say 1 half was a 0, a possible 0? Oh, yeah. Let's try 1 half real quick. Why not? So I'm going to use my result, 2, negative 3, and 1. Negative 2 times 1 half is negative 1, 0. Hey, look at that. It is. We got um, uh, this becomes 2x minus 2 equals 0. So therefore, my factors actually 1 half work. So therefore, my factors are um, x plus 6 times uh, x minus 1 times Let's see, plus 2 divided by 2, so 
x equals um, plus 2 to the other. Oh, uh, x minus 1 half. And then you could see actually x uh, plus 1 again is your, or x minus 1 is a factor. It's actually a squared because it's a multiplicity of 2. It rebounds from there. So x minus 1 is another one. So we actually just write it as a square. So there would be my please result of factors, teacher, or my sets of factors. So my zeros are equal to negative 6, positive 1 with the multiplicity of 2, and 1 half. Remember, we were talking about multiplicities. That means the, see, you guys notice right here, since it rebounds, I know that positive 1 had an mul even multiplicity, because it rebounds. Right? Remember we talked about multiplicity? So you guys should know automatically there, I'm going to have whatever that 0 was, is going to be a multiplicity of 2, because it rebounds. These two, it crosses, so they're odd multiplicities. OK? Cool? That's actually 2x. 2x minus 1 could be the factor instead.